I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray that you are well kept of the Lord and that you are in good cheer despite the great uh, challenges that we are all facing. Uh, I am very grateful personally uh, for how the Lord has kept us and uh, I pray that you can also look around and have reasons to have good cheer, uh, to be grateful to God. I personally acknowledge that where we are at as a nation is nothing short of a miracle. When you think about all the predictions that had been made and, and just the devastating effect of the coronavirus around the world, uh, you will agree with me that what we have witnessed in Kenya and indeed the larger Africa is nothing short of a miracle by God. We have a lot to thank God for. So even as we go through challenges, uh, let us not um, uh, refuse to acknowledge what God has already done. Let us be grateful and give praise and honor to God for choosing to preserve our nation and our continent. I want to read a statement uh, regarding uh, the reopening uh, of the churches by His Excellency the President. So allow me to take a few minutes and take you through that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, following the recent lapsing of the movement restrictions order and uh, the proposed phase reopening of churches across the country by His Excellency the President on the 6th of July 2020, I wish to make the following statement on behalf of the church leadership. First, uh, we wish to express our gratitude to His Excellency the President and his government on the decision to ease restrictions on travel and trade and for allowing a phased out reopening of churches and places of worship across the country. So first, our gratitude. We are very grateful that the government has recognized the church as a partner in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. We wish to reiterate the role of the church, not just in mitigating the negative effects of the coronavirus, but also in fighting any other threat confronting our nation and our people. We as a church play a crucial mediation role as we bring to bear the resources of heaven to an anxious population seeking God's intervention in these uncertain times. We have conducted counseling sessions, we have distributed food to the needy, and prayed with many anxious families facing serious economic, social, and psychological challenges. And we are grateful for your partnership with us in that process. And whereas we celebrate the first phase of reopening of places of worship with the rest of the country, we are unfortunately unable to welcome our congregation to join us physically in our city and worker campuses this coming Sunday for reasons that will soon become very obvious. We know how much you have missed being physically present in the sanctuary to sing and to dance and to pray and praise the Lord. We know how excited you all are to meet up with friends and catch up after more than three months of enforced separation. And we know how much you all value the fellowship of believers in keeping with the command of scripture in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. So we are aware of this. But after reading the guidelines provided by the Interfaith Committee and the preconditions for reopening requirements, we have come to the conclusion that phase one of this scheduled reopening was not meant to address churches such as ours uh, for the following reasons. First, the schedule itself defines the sheer size of the congregation by setting a limit of 100 people or persons, including staff, media, support teams, ushers, and worship team members. This means that practically not more than 60 congregation members will be able to attend any one service when you factor in all the other staff and volunteers and media and worship team members. Even our youngest congregation, which is Waka, already has in attendance in excess of 1,500 adults. This is as per the numbers just the pre-COVID shutdown season. City campus has almost doubled that. So we are talking about allowing maybe three to five percent of our congregation and locking out over 90 95% of you should we have a physical 
um, worship service. So our dilemma is which of the three or five percent do we choose? And even if we were to multiply our efforts and hold up to 10 services a week, we would still not even be able to reach half of you. We find such a choice both impractical and unfair during this time. Secondly, we hold to the sanctity of sung worship as key in connecting us spiritually with God. In this particular phase, sung worship as we know it will not be allowed on Sundays because singing, unfortunately, has been equated with coughing and classified as a high-risk activity in terms of its potential to spread the coronavirus. Only pre-recorded worship music will be allowed for the time being. We know that many of you come to church in order to experience and participate in live worship. It's a highlight of our Sunday service for many of us and removing it from the menu diminishes our experience significantly and alters the character of our Sunday services. For many of us, it defeats the purpose of my being in church physically only to be denied the opportunity to participate in live sung worship. Thirdly, the time of worship, the worship service itself has been restricted to one hour. And this one hour includes both the arrival and the departure of the congregation. Everything must happen within that time. Granted that our services are never very long, but one hour we also feel with all these things included um, is actually cutting it too close. When you consider that a mandatory COVID-19 awareness announcement has to be made within that time. We have to look for community time. We have to have any service event within that time. We have to have worship and the preaching. Um, if all this is to be fitted within one hour, then we are actually working with a very, very squeezed time space. It will be very, very rushed. Furthermore, any fellowship or catch-up time after the service has been strictly prohibited. Churches have been tasked and required to ensure that every congregation member present in that service exits the premises within one hour and that the premises themselves will be left for fumigation um, in readiness for the next service, if any. That again is um, a very, very tight requirement. Fourth, we will not be able to share a cup of tea or a meal with you after the service. Again, part of the strict prohibition to limit contact time uh, that is spent together to minimize risk of infection. Many of you will agree that our after tea service that is served here in Ruaka at uh, the poolside or uh, at the back of the church um, on in campus are some of the highlights because that's where you catch up with your friends and know how they have been. This is strictly prohibited because you'll be required to exit the premises immediately. Again, that compromises the Sunday physical gathering. Fifthly, we will not be able to minister to our children in Sunday school, which is a key part of our worship and spiritual nurture program because all children of the 13 uh, are not um, to attend the service, not to mention also the elderly, those who are above uh, 58 and uh, viewed to be more at risk. This means that just looking at the children alone, over 800 children in the city and 600 in Ruaka will be locked out of Sunday worship. This, of course, presents a major challenge, especially for parents who would prefer to experience Sunday service together with their children as part of their discipleship. This, among others, we feel, are the reasons that phase one does not favor a reopening of church the size of Mamlaka Hill Chapel with the kind of ministry dynamics and diversity that we experience every Sunday. What we would encourage you, however, is to take full advantage of this reopening phase by meeting in your real groups, observing government and ministry of uh, health protocols in terms of um, social distancing, personal hygiene, wearing of masks, etc. But you could meet in groups not exceeding 15 people, look for a space that will allow social distancing, and, and, and with everything on, then you can actually um, fellowship together, you can pray together, you can eat together as you share 
God's faithfulness and how he has worked with you during this COVID season. Meanwhile, we in the staff team will continue to develop our virtual community and to deliver Sunday services on Facebook and YouTube as we enrich our online fellowship through our weekly programming. And allow me just to spend a few minutes to highlight to you what it is that we do and, and how far the church has gone to ensure that we keep you connected with the spiritual uh, life that we offer here in the church. On Sunday, we have our live services, and those include Sunday School, Teens Ministry, Limitless, and these are held in both the Ruaka and the city campuses every Sunday. Then we take a break as usual on Monday, but on Tuesday, we have Tuesday Connect, which is hosted by City Campus. This is a program addressing real life issues from a biblical perspective. On Wednesday, we have the Midweek Vibes hosted by Ruaka. It brings together professionals in medicine, in education, and in religion and various other fields to address various challenges facing families in this COVID season. Then on Thursday, we have prayers. Praying is the way that we connect with God and download all our fears and our anxieties and give our thanksgiving to our God. On Friday, we also have prayers. Friday prayers hosted by our city campus between 1 and 2 p.m. And after this, um, we have our Homescapes program still on Friday, this time hosted by Ruaka, uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. This is a program addressing crucial social, economic, cultural, and spiritual matters that are affecting the families. We regularly activate these programs on our online platforms, uh, so please ensure that you tune in at the highlighted times and you will be able to engage with us on a regular basis for the benefit and the growth of the entire body of Christ. Finally, uh, let me thank you most sincerely for your continued engagement with us on phone and online and your faithful participation with your respective congregation and church leadership. We thank you for your support. May the Lord keep you, may the Lord protect you, and may the Lord favor you and your loved ones in accordance with his promise in scripture. Goodbye and God bless you.